Dispatch 82, 911. What's your emergency? Some guy just took a student out of my class. He was wearing a prison outfit covered in blood. Can you repeat that? Had... Hello? What? Can you repeat that? Some guy just took a student out of my class. He was wearing a prison outfit covered in blood on my Porto Middle School. I'm a teacher here. Is he still there? No, he took off in a silver SUV down 60th. You know the maker model? And it looked like an old forerunner, like had like a black metal bard over the bumper. Okay, what is your name? Carol Simmons. Okay, Carol, I need you to inform your campus security and all the other staff that we have just had an incident at the Quartz Hill Prison. Multiple people have escaped, so you need to lock down the entire campus immediately and do not let anyone out until the officers arrive. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Now, what was the student's name who was taken? Samantha Smith. Samantha Smith, and what was she wearing? Uh, blue jeans, uh, blue jacket, uh, one of the zip up ones, like a, like a hoodie, with a hoodie. Oh, how, how, how old is she? I think she's 12. Let me go! You're up. You want breakfast? No! Don't come near me. I, I, I'm calling the police. Oh. Reception's kind of spotty out here. But go ahead. The forest is a three-day walk to the nearest gas station. Look, we don't have a lot of time. And this is going to be your last meal on Earth, so you better enjoy it. It's poison. You're trying to kill me! Then don't eat it! God, you're worse than your mother. Look, we don't have time to argue. I only have a couple hours to get you packed, fed, and trained. When you're finished, put these on. Follow me. How do you know my mom? Who are you? I'm your dad, kid. In jail and away from you. Now you're giving me and Beaker a headache. Y you kidnapped me, and now you're trying to get away from me? I didn't kidnap you, Beaker did. And he didn't even kidnap you. He did exactly as your mom told him to do. Wait. So am I. We're trying to save your life, Sam. We don't I... have a lot of time. Who's Beaker? You took me. You brought me here. 
There's someone else inside of me. Well, not inside of me. He's connected to me, kind of like a conjoined twin, except he's in another universe or plane that crosses with ours. We're two biofields stuck together. You have one too. We all do. It's, uh, it's an electromagnetic signature that extends outside of our body. And creatures in other universes, they can see this and they try to prey on the energy that your biofield produces. They see you and they think it's food. Electro what? You have what inside of you? What was that? That speaker. Oh, he's eating all kinds of shit. Here, put these on and look at me. Dial closest to your eye is A, next to that is B, then C, all the way to H. Don't touch the top ones, I've already calibrated them so that each universe will be in focus. Here, take them. What is that? This is Beaker. He's the one that took you last night. My apologies that he scared you. He's an entity that lives on me. You have one too, however, yours is still developing. Like a baby rattlesnake, it doesn't know how much poison to shoot out, so it just lets it all out at once. Normally, the sodium in your blood helps protect you like a shield, but when you get stressed or dehydrated, your biofield pokes out past your body and is exposed to creatures and other universes that try to feed on you. That's why you get headaches all the time. Are these virtual reality glasses? No, that's as real as it gets. The human eye can only see a small spectrum of light. These help you see a lot more. Beaker made them for me to show me who he was. He takes control of me sometimes and either builds something or gets me into trouble. He even got me thrown into prison. Figured it out later, it was because cell walls were made out of steel which protected us both from attacks. Attacks? These things attack you? Not all of them, but the big ones can be dangerous to yours especially. The smaller ones will stay away from you. Some will heal you and some will follow you around like a dog. I made you this book and cataloged everything I've seen so far, including survival instructions on how to both operate and repair your ship. A ship? Like a boat? Why are you doing all this? Turn to A4. What the hell is happening? Whoa, God. whoa, whoa, relax, relax. They're not dangerous. Calm down. Look up. Those are spacecrafts filled with a bunch of those tiny little dots that you see all over you. And they're leaving this planet. What are they? They're another society in a universe that intersects ours in such a way that allows them to see and feel us, but we can't see or feel them. So they've been using us like cattle to build their world for them. We're basically their slaves and we don't even know it. Every movement you make, every place you go, they can see before you make it and control it like a bus schedule. How can they see things before they happen? Roll A back to one and move over to B3. Ugh. Look right there. That's how. This universe is odd. 
Every time I watched that one, I learned something new. Most recently, those lines you see off in the distance, they're about to intersect right here on Earth. Which means something's coming, something big. And we need to get you out of here all the same. What's coming? Those lines are massive. Oh, come on. Let's go see if your ship is still one piece. It's been a few years since I've been here. Hopefully it's not all rat-eaten. What? Is this whole thing even real? Hey, wait, or are you just some crazy person with a VR headset trying to trick me? No. You'll be leaving the planet in this. What is this? This is your ship. No, it's not. Where are the boosters? It's just a rusty old barrel with tape on it. That's not safe. She still flies. You got me there and back. Besides, you're getting the new and improved version. The first gen I built was a series of eight motors with offset weight on each rotor, like this one here. Ah! It worked, but anything with moving parts eventually failed. So, I built you this one. Basically a closed circuit recycling particle accelerator. It splits the path of the tungsten plasma into an expanding chamber, then rejoins it in the center, giving a much smoother inertial propulsion. It's slower than the previous model, but it's safer, I assure you. This is nuts. That's not a ship. This has duct tape on it. It's good tape. Now get in. I need to teach you how to use it. Ah! <laughs> I'm not getting in that thing. I need to make sure you fit. There's a lot of things that you're gonna need when you land. I need to figure out what stays and what goes. Me? I'm not going. You're crazy. First things first, the planet you're traveling to, I've mapped your trajectory to land on the same planet as those creepy dots, but you'll be landing on an island that doesn't have any creatures on it that can kill you. But if for whatever reason you make it to the mainland, be very careful. The animals there are still evolving and some of them are a lot bigger than you and very dangerous. I'm packing you with a small supply of water, but you will need to find your own water source that's not seawater. There's a waterfall in the mountains nearby. Do not drink water in puddles. If it's standing still, leave it alone, okay? Bacteria and mold grow in puddles, and there's a new planet. You won't have enough antibodies to fight off any infection. Just filter it properly or boil it. You know how to make fire? No. All right, I, I gave you some matches and a lighter, but if that fails, just look in the book. Uh, are you coming with me? I need to make sure that you launch safely, all right? When it's time to get in, get inside, pull the top over you. Don't do it now, I've already said it. But when it's time, push this button. The whole chamber will fill with a polymerized foam I created to mitigate G-loading forces from cracking you during your trip. After that happens, hold your breath, get all the air out of your lungs, then push this button. It should freeze you instantly and start charging the fusion propulsion engine, which will power those speakers, which will help push some of the multi-dimensional matter out of the way. Now, repeat back to me what I just said. Get in, pull that thing there, push that, then push that. What do you do before you push this button? I forgot. Wait, hold my breath. Hold your breath to get all the air out first. If there's any air in your lungs, little bits of water can crystallize and cause pulmonary edema and kill you before you even land. I don't think I could do this. You're gonna freeze me? Is this even safe? Work for me. I came out just fine. Now get out, help me drag this thing outside. I can't do it by myself. So, this really is my last day on Earth? You sure you don't want breakfast? Did you get shot? Beaker got me shot, yes. When he's climbing over the prison wall. Uh, are you gonna be okay? I'll be fine. Finish up. Why did you leave me? When your mother was giving birth to you, there was a swimmer nearby. 
They love hanging out around hospitals. A lot of people die there, so it's easy hunting for exposed biofields. Your mother tried to use hers to shield you from the swimmer, but there were too many of them. Beaker and I decided it wasn't safe for you if we stuck around after that, so we left. I regret every day after that. What was she like? She was beautiful. Had the same temper that you have now. But she was very meticulous and very smart. When she started tinkering around with that future universe doing high school geometry, I never imagined she'd be able to see this. But she did. I miss her. I hope to see her again soon. In heaven, right? No. And our paths cross again. Speaking of heaven, when you die, don't move towards the light. That's not heaven. That's the planet's core trying to suck you in. Stay as far away from that as possible. Eventually, you'll land in the right body of the right dimension. Just be patient and fight off any swimmers that come near you. Use your forceps. I forgot. Put the glasses on and look at me. <sighs> These are your forceps. And if you're gonna survive after death, you will need to learn how to use them. <sighs> I have these too? Yes. And with some practice, you can use them to defend yourself against swimmer attacks. If you get hungry or your energy gets depleted, you can use them to hunt smaller swimmers, but right now I need to teach you how to use the hand, the hand of the larger ones. Ah! As you can see, trees feed on swimmers. This one was caught decades ago. It's still alive, it's been slowly fighting back ever since. When you land, set up base camp under the biggest tree you can find. It'll protect you the same way a sea anemone protects a clownfish. And yes, every living thing has a biofield. Sometimes the smallest creatures have the biggest biofields. So be careful who you make friends with. Okay, go ahead, give it a try. So, uh, what do I do? Okay, slowly. Start off by tensing all your muscles, starting by with your abdominals. Then, find that sweet spot and release. <laughs> like that? No. No. You have to use your core muscles. Remember, when you die, you won't have your muscles, you won't have your body. I have no idea what I'm doing, and you're not giving me enough information. What does that even mean, sweet spot? Just give me the glasses. Show me what you're talking about. time. This is stupid. You're not explaining this right. It makes no sense. Just, just, just forget it. Looks like, looks like your anger pulled it out. Whoa. What, what do I do? What, what do I do now? Memorize that feeling. Now, 
try to mold it into a point by rage and then change the levels of that rage. Uh, memorize that feeling. Now pierce it. Ah! Good. Really good. More like your mother. Just need a little anger to get you going. Um, Dad? The lines, uh, they're moving faster, and there's more than coming. You see? We need to launch. Now. Now? Now! Come on, let's go, go, go! Oh, get in! Don't lose these. You got it? Got it? I wish we had more time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Get down, down! Now? Uh, do I start now? Hello? Hello?